grains come down and hit the tree. They hit the leaves and then they fall down. So drip edges of forests and trees uh, turn into fertility accumulation sites. So these are strategically put. Hey, welcome back guys. Uh, we are at Baltimore Valley, which is a local nursery uh, near me. They run an end of sa season auction every single year that I usually go to. Because of COVID, um, they're not running their end of season auction, but they're doing a sale right now. So um, we're actually gonna just spend some of the money that you guys have graciously donated. I think it's nice when people know where their money goes. So all every penny that has been donated to me is being spent today on trees and we're gonna plant trees so that you guys know, uh, you know, money that you do have donated to me is going straight back to nature. So let's just go say hi uh, to Marshall over at, uh, at Baltimore Valley. Hi, my name is Marshall. Uh, we're here at Baltimore Valley Garden Center. Been speaking with Keith. I was lucky enough to meet him about a year ago. Um, and through our mutual love of trees and permaculture, we've, we've been working together here to bring some things to his place. Uh, we have a grand selection here. I know it's fall and leaves are falling, but we're still working hard. Uh, we are open all the way until Christmas. And you can catch us in the early spring when we have all sorts of uh, fruit trees, everything from a pawpaw all the way down to a peach and an apple. Hey, we're in Baltimore Valley up the 45. So it's kind of a funny story with uh, Marshall and I. Um, I've been coming to this end of season auction for a couple years now, maybe three, maybe four years, and uh, seen him around. And one day I went to this to his father's place. Actually, his father has a store called uh, Blue Frog Nursery. Um, and that and he runs a bunch of aquatics. So a lot, I got some of my koi there. I've been getting my water hyacinth there I kind of like to try to support local businesses whenever possible because I like that these guys exist and if I want them to keep existing then I need to help um, Keep them alive. So I like to buy I spend quite a bit of money here um, And pretty much any money I spend I try to spend it here. Sometimes I get bare root uh, trees from other places but I met him at his uh, father's place and then we got talking about permaculture. Turns out he's a permie as well and uh, kind of hit it off a bit. Uh, so a super nice guy. Uh, it's neat when you find local people uh, that have this, you know, you say one word and you just understand so much about that person probably that you have in common. It's kind of interesting how, uh, how much of a community permaculture has. So anyways, I hope you like this video. We're gonna go plant these trees now. And a uh, big shout out to Baltimore Valley Nursery for the end of season auctions that you normally have, not this year, uh, hopefully more in the future. And uh, we'll be coming here every year that they have them. Thanks for watching guys. Okay, so we ended up getting a couple pears, a couple more sea buckthorn, the Chuxaya sea buckthorn, and this drip edge tree guild that I want to expand is going to be the place where we plant. Now remember this I started approximately a year ago so I like to start areas roughly a year before I plant into them. So these wood chips have had about a year to go. I think in hindsight I would have liked to have probably doubled the width, made it twice as, as wide. I wanted to get it where you could reach in on both sides but I should have gone a little wider. Um, but it is what it is and I might expand it in the future. But um, I think this will look really good. We have some sage that I got from my mother um, that has already been planted in there. We've got elderberries and raspberries that have already been planted in there. We've got a little oak trees um, scattered throughout. I don't know if that'll survive or not. It might, it might not. A bunch of cuttings of different things have been put in there. Uh, some hazelnuts and uh, we've got this multigraph uh, pear there as well. Um, there's stuff like say the cuttings here of the elderberry. So still alive, still doing good, good sign. Um, we have uh, chives that have been planted. We've got um, King's Triforia mushrooms that have been inoculated. In here, I've been putting uh, seeds of asparagus in here, like the berries. So there's a lot of stuff planted in here, but it looks fairly quiet. Uh, hopefully over the years, this will really develop. I can already see lots of, you know, little, critters and things in here that are going to do well and I'm really surprised that this elderberry 
cuttings did so well this year. They really did fantastic. I'm really happy with them. And the pawpaws are all gone to sleep completely. Um, but they've done well. I put peach cuttings around it just in case it doesn't make it and the peaches do. So I think we're going to fill this guild out a little more with some plants from you guys, from your donations and uh, merchandise buys. So thank you very much. You guys have uh, funded for free. Just, you know, I guess I guess my labor is not free and I put a lot of work into this channel and time, but um, it's fun for me. And I love seeing your stories. I love seeing where you live. I love seeing your gardens and... Um, people saying that they're gonna plant trees because they're watching my videos. I just that is the payback that I really want So I'm turning your donations and money into trees. So I think this is where we'll put them. Thanks guys And every time you see this you'll know that these exist because of you Now as far as soil amendments go, I'm not going to be adding anything except I'm going to add a little bit of the worm castings uh, mostly because I want to get red wigglers in these beds eating the stuff like this, the Jerusalem artichokes. So just in case there's ever some damage, Jerusalem artichokes below the ground from um, other soil life in the ground that maybe punctures the, the skin wall of the Jerusalem artichokes, those red wigglers can find their way and turn it into worm castings directly next to the raspberry, the oak, and the pear. Um, the sea buckthorn variety that we picked up is called Chuxaya. So that is, if you saw my video from earlier on what's the healthiest berry in the world, that's this. And um, this is a very large sea buckthorn plant, uh, sea buckthorn berry with fairly small thorns. I can see some thorns in here um, that look large, but see how soft they are. So they're actually not hard to deal with and the berries are gigantic. So I've really enjoyed this variety in particular. So we picked up two more of those and they're gonna be situated right in between the uh, two pear trees and the third pear tree that we bought. And then we have another one here. So we're gonna keep with that theme, putting nitrogen fixers between, fleshing the guild out with different size layers of bush plants that perform different functions. The elderberry is food for the birds, perch for the birds to eat insects that are bothering the pear. Very good companions in that way. And then they're a food crop. And then we've got a aromatic confuser for pests in this sage. And that will kind of hide the smell of these pears from pests that like to land on pear trees and lay eggs inside the pears like coddling moth. So all of these plants are performing a function but they're also you know an edible medicinal um, a nitrogen fixing edible healthy berry a carb crop high calorie carb crop for long-term storage and turns into worm food you know all these functions are being uh, magnified and they're all located at the drip edge of the tree so this is also south this way so they get full sun they're right under a giant maple tree um, that probably has another, I don't know, couple decades left in its life. Um, but importantly, it's under the drip edge of the tree. So when rains come down and hit the tree, they hit the leaves and then they fall down. So drip edges of forests and trees uh, turn into fertility accumulation sites. So these are strategically put in this drip edge of the tree where they're not going to get shaded out from the tree um, they'll provide a nice visual barrier of the road provide food and all that but also they're going to collect fertility that you know a raindrop that had this maple tree not existed might have flown way over and landed way back here is instead going to come hit the leaf and fall down and feed this whole entire um, guild so this is a way that we can function stack and efficiency stack through smart design. And one last thing, when those raindrops are falling down and hitting the soil, we don't want them to run away. So we want to either berm this up if it's on a downhill, we might want to put a berm here just to hold that water and let it sink down into the ground. Um, alternatively, we can also, or additionally, we can also put a very thick wood mulch, carbon-based mulch 
and that carbon acts as a water sponge, nutrient sponge and all those things as well, but a water sponge so that when that rain hits, it's held and it doesn't just wash and run away. You know, it's held for a long time where the trees can get a nice low moisture profile, moderated long-term um, water source instead of a high peak density water source that would be if it was say bare soil where the rain comes it floods and then it washes away so they get a ton of rain and then it washes this it'll fall get captured get soaked like a sponge hold and then remain there for days or even weeks and the trees can get a little bit of moisture for as long as they want and then when the next rain comes they get recharged all right so let's get digging now i want to show you why you plant uh, you set your beds up a year in advance. Um, this was actually a very low work um, sheet mulch. I didn't do the compost. I didn't do a whole lot of things. I just literally cardboard and wood chips on top. That's all I did for the sheet mulch. And it sat around for a year. And now we can look at how wonderful the soil is as soil life crawls away from my hands. And we can see that the cardboard is completely gone and we've got roots and we've got critters in here and we've got nice dark rich fungal dominated soil. So we're gonna pull this back and this is what our trees are going in. This is what good forest soil looks like and this is only one year. This is gonna get better year after year. This is a long-term game. It's not a one-year plan. It's a 40-year plan and we snowball on itself by covering and protecting that soil layer. Okay, so the hole is dug, and you can see how dark the soil is down, right down low. All right, so here it is planted. We just recover with the wood chips. All right, so next hole dug for the larger plants. Um, I forgot to mention something. When you dig the hole, I've mentioned this in other videos, but I should mention it here as well. Um, you should scar up the sides. You don't want a polished side from where your shovel went in and made a super flat surface because you don't want the roots to hit it and then kind of curl around and run around in a circle in the hole. You want them to be able to find their way in, weasel through a crack. So however you do that with a square hole, um, I like to take my square and kind of multiply it by a million by putting these little edge nicks in the side of the hole. And then that way the roots can find their way out um, into the surrounding uh, soil. Okay. Now, a uh, critical step I didn't mention or do for the sea buckthorn, which doesn't matter because these things won't die, you can't kill them. Um, but for the pear, you know, I definitely want to make sure I remember to do is when you put that um, root ball of the pear into the hole, there's a blank space around it and you backfill it with soil, but there's a lot of air gap in there. Even if you do your best, there's a lot of air gap. So what we really want to do now is ideally from a pond or something with um, with life rich water is we want to give this thing an absolute drenching soak and this water will pool and drag down dirt particles all around the planting area of the tree and we're gonna let that soak in and as that soaks in it's gonna pull little tiny dust particles dirt particles down in that interspace and it'll help kind of pack it in and fill it in. And it also give the tree some, um, some water. It'll kind of soak its roots so it'll get some water. This is a fairly um, shocking, distressing thing for the tree to get planted and moved, pulled out of a pot. Its roots, all the microscopic fine root hairs get kind of fragmented, some of them do anyways. So it, it's a fairly traumatic experience for the tree. So I also had a, found a cheap pawpaw, so it was 20 bucks. It may not come back, um, but whatever, 20 bucks on sale, 40% uh, off. It's not bad. Okay, so here is the finished guild. Topped up the wood chips and everything's planted and I can't wait to see how this develops over the next year or so. We've got a triple pear, double sea buckthorn, elderberry, sage, Jerusalem artichoke, raspberry, oh man, there's probably so much more in there, definitely comfrey, garlic, 
Egyptian walking onions. There's so much in there. Elderberry, house caps. Oh my gosh, I just keep seeing it when I'm going around. Pawpaws. So it should be interesting. Cherries. See how this goes for the next year. Hopefully it'll kind of fill in, fill in the space from the road. Um, give me a nice little walking area behind it. And we'll be able to look out our front door and see pears growing. And we'll be able to just go out and grab some sage for soups. Pretty nice. So thanks for watching another busy day. And I'll see you on the next one, guys. Get planting.